Welcome to Stories of Art. My name is Karel Huidekoper and I'd like to tell you something about this painting by Jan Steen called In Wilde Zie Toe, which is Dutch so nobody can understand it, but it translates more or less to uh, In Case of Luxury Beware. Now today we're used to paintings having a title, but that was actually a quite a new thing in the 17th century. Paintings usually didn't. Uh, for centuries before it had always been that most paintings were either religious, crucifixions or nativity scenes or directly biblical scenes that ever, everyone would recognize, or portraits. Neither one needed the title, everybody knew what was on it. And in the, in the course of the 16th century, more elaborate themes have become suitable for painting. And so you have paintings of mythological subjects, for instance, and um, they too would not really have a title because if you wanted a painting, you simply went to a painter and discussed what he was going to put on it. You didn't have signs in your house saying what was on your own paintings. Um, but more and more subjects were painted and so to to give them meaning to 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 show what they actually meant uh, some painters started to add a title to their paintings and in this case Jan Steen did he was actually one of the first to do that in the Netherlands but um, there is a name on the painting it's on the piece of slate that you can see on the right hand lower corner um, there it actually says in Wilde Zie Toe and there's an origin to that. These, these sort of strange pictures of, in this case, what seems like simply a, a, a household scene of a, house that, of a household that's gone completely wrong, um, could be a normal daily setting, except that it isn't. But to make sure that we get the, the point, he added the title. Now, that comes from a, um, a, a different art form that became popular in the 16th century, and they're called emblemata. And emblemata, they were invented in the 1530s um, in, uh, in a sort of book form where uh, you would have a, well, an em emblemata, that it's a, it's a picture um, which, uh, with, a, with a, a sort of a title called the motto. Uh, and that motto is usually a sort of cryptic sentence in either Greek or Latin. And below the picture, you would have a poem, a short poem, that more or less complain, uh, explains the story of, of them both or adds to the confusion. Um, I have a, a, a famous example here. This one is called Ki um, Evadeth. That would be the motto. That's the, what this picture is about. Um, who can escape it? is what that would be in, uh, in English. And then there's this boy leaning on a skull and he's blowing bubbles. And below it, there's uh, all the way down there, there's a little uh, poem that, that well, expands on, on this. Now this is a pretty straightforward theme called the homo bula. A homo bula is, uh, man is like a, um, a, like a, a soap bell, a, a bubble. And, um, we may think of ourselves as pretty and pretty solid and and all that, but in a in a wink of an eye, you can just be gone. Slightly depress depressing, but a very popular theme for some reason. Um, in the in the sixteenth and in the seventeenth and later centuries, and the sort of standardized way to to show that is this little boy leaning on a skull. So you have a very young person and death put together. Um, all throughout the 16th century, this was, this was made. Uh, one of the first people who, who made this, this theme famous was Erasmus. And from, from his time on out, people have, have used this image. Um, what you can see is that it's not just a little boy blowing bubbles while leaning on a skull. Uh, the artist, in this case, Holtius, he uh, elaborated on the on the theme so he added other other things that are famously uh, short-lived flowers um, or smoke that just for sort of blows away um, and you could do anything add anything that you would find 
appropriate to the theme. A different emblem is this one right here. Um, and this one is um, also published in the Netherlands. And it is called Het zijn sterke benen die wilde dragen kunnen. And, and you can actually see there's a sort of a band that, that has these words in, at the bottom. Uh, and it means it takes strong legs to carry wealth. What that means is um, if you have wealth, you could easily get lazy. So to, um, and if you get lazy, you, uh, you start drinking, you start spending, you start um, living it up and stop working. And uh, it takes discipline not to do that. And um, so that's the strong legs there. They're the, the, the discipline that, that keep you on the right track, even though you have luxury, you have wealth. Because if you don't, you end up poor. And you can see there's the, this lady that's been carried by a strong man, and she is she's spending money like, well, like it's going out of style. Um, you can see her just, just throwing it out by the handful. She has this glass in her hand that she's... That, wine is dripping from and on the floor there are there are all kinds of distractions that are fun but don't make you any money um, there's uh, masks that have to do with theater i suppose or or deception there's games there's there's all kinds of stuff yeah, sports uh, sports weren't healthy at the time yet um but all these things are distractions they keep you from from work from being productive and that's um, how you end up poor. So if you have too much wealth you, and you, you're not disciplined, you, you will lose in the end. In some cases, these, these emblemas have became so popular that they, they sort of spilled over into other art forms and they were used in paintings. And this is one of those cases. This, this emblemata of uh, saying sterke benen, their strong legs who can carry wealth, uh, became a painting in, in just a slightly adjusted form and that's the one we were looking at. You can see that the, the sort of the same lady is sitting in the front, although the strong legs are not carrying her. Now we see the man with the strong legs sitting right next to her. Um, she looks a lot like the lady in the, um, in, in the picture I showed you before, because she's even holding the glass of wine in one hand. She's spilling it over almost in, in the guy's crutch. And he's showing us his strong legs that are not being used. Because in this case, things have gone wrong. The strong legs aren't used, um, there's no discipline, and uh, all the wealth is being spilt over. You can see, by the way, she's, she's drinking pretty heavily. She has a wine glass in one hand and a beer jug in the other, so that's, that's taking things pretty seriously. Um, we can also see that on the ground there's all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be there. There's food, um, uh, pretzels, there's um, there's a jug on the floor, There's and if you look at in the uh, left hand corner there's a uh, some important piece of paper there, there's all kinds of um, of seals on it so it it must be something like a diploma or the mortgage whatever and it's on the floor where it's obviously not supposed to be and uh, it's it's about to get very very wet because there's a a barrel there and a the barrel um, the tap is is missing so it's flowing out it's just emptying itself on the floor if you look slightly above it then you see that there's a baby who apparently had been playing with the mortgage and um, also has lots of jewelry in her hand and some stuff that that babies are not supposed to be playing with and just beyond the baby there's a there's a dog standing on on top of the table uh, eating a meat pie. Uh, obviously not supposed to be doing that either. Um, the, the head of the household, the, the lady of the house, is sitting right next to, to the dog and you can see she's taking a nap. So um, um, she's not paying attention and things go very very wrong. Um, because the little boy sitting standing next to her is has started to smoke a pipe Pipe smoking wasn't um, wasn't considered to be um, bad for your health yet, but it was considered to be lazy, um, because it, if you're smoking a pipe, you're not doing anything else. Um, there's a, his, his sister, I suppose, um, is starting to steal from the cupboard behind them, 
by the way, both of these children uh, appear in many of, of Jan Steen's paintings and most likely they're portraits of his, his own children. Um, but she's become a thief because nobody's correcting her. Of course, that's the that's downhill slope she's on. And um, right next to, the, uh, to them, on the, uh, on the right, you see uh, money bags. These are money bags. And you, you can see that they are, um, that they're almost empty. There's some weight in them, but they're far from full. And um, to the right of that, there's this basket hanging, hanging from the ceiling. And in it, there is a, uh, uh, is a crutch, a crutch called a beggar's crutch. Um, the sort of thing that beggars use, have um, uh, sitting in front of a building and, and, and begging for money. So that's, that's to show us that poverty is coming. And there's only one, um, one person, you might say, trying to stop all this. There's a, a little monkey uh, holding up one of the weights of the clock. So it's, it tries to stop time from, from passing. Um, below them... Below the little monkey, there's a, there are two people who are quite different from all the others. And um, they're actually, uh, there's this one man with a, with a, a duck on his neck, which is, a, of course, a, a slightly strange thing to, to see. He is trying to, to preach to, uh, to the people there um, from, a, from a Bible, I suppose. He is what in England would be called a Puritan. They had a nickname in, in the Netherlands because they preached all the time. They were, they were called quackers. They, were, they quacked like a duck all the time, which is not the same thing as Quakers, by the way. They may have the same sort of origin. I, I'm not sure. He has the duck because he, he keeps reminding them of things they don't want to hear. And the lady next to him is also trying to admonish this, this man sitting there with his leg in front of the, the lady we started out with. Um, and she's trying to admonish him. She's trying to tell him, stop this, do something useful. And he's just not listening. It's as if they throw uh, flowers before the swines. Um, it's, a, it's an expression in Dutch. I'm not sure if it's in English as well. Today we say pearls before swines. Um, but it's throwing something beautiful, something wise, something... Uh, expensive, something pretty, in front of people who cannot understand it, uh, who will not appreciate it. And at the time, it was, that expression, literally translated, was to throw flowers in front of swines. And you can see there's this, this string of flowers falling, and below it, there you have a little pig. That pig, by the way, has a tap in his mouth. It's a tap from the, uh, from the barrel on the other side of the room. That's also an expression that was used at the time. We don't use it anymore. Dutch people today don't know it anymore. But um, it was if uh, the pig has the tap means that um, uh, an innkeeper is giving away its own drinks. It's just giving his booze away for free. Well, that little pig standing there, you can also see into the next room. And in the next room, there's even a, there's a roaring fire which is of course wasted on everybody because they're not in that room so it's another example of just spilling everything they're wasting away all their money there's uh, and we see the warning on the piece of slate s telling us that in case of uh, luxury we really need to beware now if you like this painting and you want to see the real one you'll have to go to vienna because it's it's in the kunsthistorisches museum in vienna um, and if you like art then you have to go there anyway because they have this absolutely brilliant collection and um, if you like this video then please press like and subscribe and uh, i hope to see you in the next video bye for now